I searched the couldn't find Little high and low Still couldn't find Nobody greater Come on Nobody greater That's right Nobody greater than you We're gonna sing that again Come on if you know it in the comments We're now in part six, week six of this teaching series Of the audacity of faith and today we will talk about the audacity of faith to face your enemies because as stated, I'm giving you a set of directions to get you to a point in your life where you're living life to the full and I don't want you to be bamboozled on your journey to life to the full. Several enemies will show up trying to detour you and get you sidetracked. So I have a responsibility to, in the midst of giving you directions to remind you of some of the pitfalls and hurdles you may face so you won't give up on your way. So I say, on my way. On my way. Oh, but you're not going to give up. See, you must have faith that's alive to face your enemies. But the enemy, ever since the Garden of Eden, the enemy has been determined to keep you from living life to the full. And the amazing thing about the enemy, he has not really changed his bag of tricks. The enemy has been using the same tricks repetitiously over and over again to defeat us in our journey to a place called abundance. The amazing thing about the enemy is, it reminds me of, the devil reminds me this, Deacon Jones, the devil reminds me of an old school college coach that only ran a few plays, but they ran them so well, no one could stop him. I remember back in the day, Nebraska would run the same play over and over again, but they ran with such perfection and skill, it was hard to defend. And that's what the devil is doing. He has made his mind up. I don't need to change anything, because what I'm using to attack them, what I'm using to defeat them, what I'm using to destroy them is working so well I don't even need to be creative just keep running the same old scheme over and over again and they keep falling for it. So today we're going to deal with the audacity of faith to face your enemies. Because we cannot face our enemies with dead faith. And I hate to bust your bubble. I, I, I know how many hours you pray. I know you're fasting. I know you're sewing. I know you're singing. I know you're deaconing. I know you're preaching. But don't fool yourself. You have enemies. And if you're walking around here like you don't have enemies, I promise you, you're setting yourself up for a great failure. For a matter of fact, it's hard to be promoted without enemies. So if you say I have no enemies, you're telling me you maximize your potential because enemies will only show up if you're going somewhere. Enemies will not position themselves in your atmosphere if you're stagnant. Because one of the goals of an enemy is to hold you down. If you're holding yourself down, there are no need for any enemy. Let's look at some of the tricks. Before we even get into the text, let me give you some of the tricks the enemy uses to stop you from living life to the full, to create what I call dead faith atmosphere. Dead faith atmosphere keeps us from overcoming the enemy. Let's break this down, dead, dead, deep. The devil wants to distract you to keep you from focusing on the word which gives you victory. Uh, let me say it again real slow. The enemy wants to keep you distracted. Because if you're distracted with stuff, if you're distracted with bad relationships, if you're distracted with financial situations, if you're distracted with anything that will stop you from focusing on the main thing, which is the word of God, because I pray you realize by now you find your victory in the word of God. That's why it's hard to get you to come to Bible study because the devil knows if you get in Bible study long enough and simplistically hear the word of God and receive the 
word of God, drastic change will take place in your life and you will be equipped to overcome him so he distracts you with overtime every time Bible study takes place. And the truth is, the reason you're stuck in overtime is not because your company loves you so much, but the devil is setting you up because you're outspending yourself. You're spending so much to impress folks who really don't like you in the first place. For a matter of fact, some of you are working on jobs overtime to impress your enemies. She's up. She's up. Enemy. It's looking for who we can devour. But notice the description of the Bible says, like a roaring lion. You've probably never spent time in a jungle or watched the animal kingdom. So I, I, I'll, I'll give it to you in language you understand, like a walking dog. Making a bunch of noise, but really don't have a lot of power. I mean, you listen to the voice, it sounds like. I mean, I, I have a little pool in my neighborhood that makes so much noise, you would think he was a rock wall. And that's how the devil is if you just go by the sound. It would terrify you, but the reality of it is, it's just a noise. Because the Bible says, if you keep the faith to resist him, I have the audacity of faith to overcome my enemy because God simply tells me to resist him. In other words, flee from temptation. I don't have to be moved by your side. Yes, I've come to discover, and I don't know if it's wisdom, old age, or a combination of the two, but I've come to discover if I don't like what you're saying, I used to be argumentative. If I didn't like what you were saying, I was going to stay and state my case and go word for word, point for point, because in my mind, I'm always right. But I've discovered that's a waste of my time and God's time. So if, if I really don't fundamentally agree with you, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to just leave your face. I'm going to resist you. And the same way I can resist people, i got to be able to resist the enemy. I pray I'm blessing somebody. See, you're spending too much time going in and out, battling with folks, just resist them. I got an email that just blessed me. It says your life is like a movie theater. There's only so many seats in the front row. Be careful who you allow to sit up front. Because you got too many folks up front making too much noise. You can't enjoy the movie going on in your own theater. To stand firm. Keep the faith to stand firm. That's good. I touched on it last week that this is the most disloyal generation I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. No one has any commitment to anything. Because yes. right. yes. yes. we don't have the faith to stand firm. Yes. Right. Come on. That's good. Even mm -hmm. I, I, I'll use a sports analogy. This stuff it already had your name on it. Warning, sound the alarms. The enemy wants to talk to you not because he loves you or desires your company or fellowship. He wants to talk you out of your position. Single people, be careful. Be careful, single people. Jesus. Men and women, be careful. Come on, help today, Pastor. Even be careful who you allow to take you out on a date. That's right. Because the time. You said, well, it's just a meal, but while you're eating, he's talking. Oh while you're eating, she's talking. Yes, and if you're not careful, they may say something to trick you out of your position. Even married people. Yes, sir. There are certain people you need to stop going to lunch with. Come on, yes, sir. Talk about it, sir. If she unhappy in her relationship, and it's all she talks about is how no good her husband is. Yeah, yeah. That spirit gonna become contagious. Uh -huh. 
right. and you're going to get home to your good husband with her bad attitude. Stop letting other people infiltrate your peace zone. If you're not a therapist or a counselor, tell them at lunch we going to eat. Talk about Young and the Restless, talk about the NFL, talk about LeBron, them squeak or something, but we ain't talking about your, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist, when I go to lunch, I want to let my hat down, I want to eat my food, drink my drink, and get back to work. If you need a therapist or a counselor, let me give you my pastor's number, he's real good, and if he's too busy, he got professional counselor he can call and hook you up with. But girlfriend, leave me alone and let me eat. Dude, I want to hear every day about how bad you're chewing up and how no good your wife is. You messed up my peace zone. I'm working. For a matter of fact, here, take this flyer, come to the greenhouse with me, a place you go to grow. But if not, you keep listening to that stuff, it'll start to make you drift. I, I, I can tell, I, I, I can tell, I, I can tell who talked to who. Because sometimes people will be influenced so to such a degree that their conversation really stop being their conversation and become the next sales conversation. That's right. That's right. Jesus. Man of God. Yes. No. Glory to God. In this season of walking by faith, don't allow the devil to rob you of your place with God. I have the audacity of faith to get back to eat. Let's close. Final scripture. Matthew chapter 4. I, I pray you're being blessed. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 10. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 10. I have the audacity of faith to face my enemies. Look at this. Jesus. Yeah, he had enemies too. Yeah. Matter of fact, he had more enemies than you could ever imagine. Yes, sir. So, what makes you think you can be Christ like and not have enemies? Yeah, Y'all baffle me sometimes. You're declaring I'm Christ like you're wearing the shirt and the cross, yet you don't want to have the experience of the cross. Look at verse 10 of Matthew chapter 4, how Jesus responds to his ultimate enemy, the devil. The devil was trying to tempt him. Jesus was on a spiritual fast, getting himself spiritually prepared for an earthly ministry. The devil comes to attack him. This is how Jesus responds in verse 13. Get this. Then, then means after all the attacks, the devil kept coming at him this way and that way and this way. The devil kept hitting him, trying to get him off guard. But look how Jesus responds in verse 10 of Matthew chapter 4. Then Jesus said to him, him being the devil, get behind me, Satan. Uh, I dare you right now. Because look at verse 11, it says, after Jesus said, then the devil left him. And the angels came and ministered to him. See, you're fighting some battles you should have spoke out a long time ago. I dare you to stand up right now and say, Satan, get behind me. Because in the midst of temptation, the, see, the devil was trying to derail the ministry of Jesus because the devil knew if Jesus gets momentum, he'll start giving sight to the blind. The devil knew if this Jesus thing picks up, he'll start causing dead men to come out of the grave. The enemy knew this Jesus had healing power. The enemy knew this Jesus had delivering power. The enemy knew Jesus could save a crackhead. This enemy knew Jesus could take a pimp and a prostitute and get them washed up and cleaned up. The enemy knew Jesus, when he preached the word, would cause sight to the black. The enemy knew everything. The enemy knew he walked on water and turned water to wine. The enemy knew he show up at the sick woman's house. The enemy knew he show up in your house and my house. So the enemy started to the real Jesus. But Jesus said, I'm not going to fight the Satan. I'm going to declare, get thee behind me. And once you start declaring, get thee behind me, sickness. Get thee behind me, poverty. Get me behind me, bitterness. Get me behind me, envy. Get me behind me, Chelsea. Line your enemies up and tell them, get behind me. And then God says, Holy Ghost angels, I got a assignment for you. Go down to his house and go down to her house and begin to minister. Let them know everything is going to be all right. And I just dropped by to tell you at the greenhouse, international church, the place you go to grow. I just dropped by to tell your spirit man and your spirit.
spirit woman. I have the audacity of faith to face my enemies. Dig deep behind me. And the angels just declare everything is going to be all right. Come on, kid. Y'all ready? Everything is going to be all right. Listen. They get ready to sing this song. The church calls it a song of invitation. And what are we inviting you to? This invitation has several parts to unfold. We invite you, one, the most significant part of the invitation is we invite you to Jesus Christ Amen. to come just as you are. Whatever shape, form, or fashion you find yourself in, to come to this altar to Jesus Christ yes. to give your life. Before you can give this church your right hand, we first desire for you to give Jesus your life. Whatever shape your life is in, you come. Secondly, you saw others earlier coming to respond to this altar call. To give the life of Christ and their right hand to this ministry. If you're here and you desire for this vision, this greenhouse international church be your spiritual headquarter, your spiritual covering, for this ministry team to become your family, your set of directions and insight to another level. Won't you come? We would love to become a part and a member of this ministry. Won't you come? Earlier, you desire for us to pray with you and pray for you. Won't you come? As they see, won't you respond to the invitation? You come to Jesus. You come to the greenhouse. You come with the touch and the grief you in the spirit of prayer. As they come, won't you respond to this call? As they come. Oh, we want 